The release date for Avatar 2 The Way of Water is coming up, and if anyone was worried that the movie would get delayed one more time, they can rest assured that that won't be happening. The flick has officially finished production and is on track for its release date. What's also weird is that it's on track to flop at the box office. Why's that? Stay watching to find out. First up, it may come as a surprise that the Avatar sequel is expected to bomb at theaters. After all, the first one is the highest grossing movie of all time, and it captured the minds of audiences and screening halls of theaters for months on end. It heralded the arrival of a new age of 3D content. Surely Fox and later Disney wouldn't have spent all these years working on an expensive new sequel to the movie if they weren't expecting it to have the same kinds of numbers. Well, that's not looking too likely right now. Internal polling data from Cosmic Book News suggests that the movie set to gross just $150 million domestically with a more optimistic average of $175 million. That's not a great performance for a movie that has a production budget estimated somewhere at the $350 million to $400 million mark. That's a pretty far cry from the box office performance of the first movie. Made on a budget of about $237 million, the movie made tens of millions of dollars each weekend it was on, leaping over the $1 billion mark in just 19 days of being in theaters. It was the first movie to ever cross $2 billion billion dollars in revenue, and that's just the first of a long list of records that movie broke. Now, why on earth is Avatar 2 expected to underperform to this extent? There are a couple of possible reasons. Starting with the most obvious and meme-worthy one, the movie was just coming out too late. We talked a bit about how groundbreaking and bank-breaking the first Avatar was, but keep in mind that the movie came out in 2009. The world was a different place, and so was the movie industry. Consider the fact that a big reason why people went to see Avatar was that it was an event, which was a big deal back then, but doesn't really register as a big deal now. Every Marvel movie is a big event these days, and loads of people ignore those. Another reason why people flocked to Avatar was the 3D experience. It wasn't the first movie to feature 3D, but it was marketed as being the movie that would show the world what possibilities lay within the technology. And it did do that. Avatar 2, on the other hand, doesn't really have much to offer in the technological department. Sure, the studio pioneered new filming and animation techniques to make the movie happen, but those aren't the sorts of things an average moviegoer would appreciate. It doesn't help that the movie aged poorly in the public consciousness. You can only enjoy the 3D for the duration of the movie, but it's the story and character characters that go home with you. That clearly wasn't the case with Avatar. Moving on, a clear example of this in action was with the re-release of the movie. Earlier this year, Disney brought the first Avatar back to theaters. We're sure the main reason that they did this is that people must have forgotten what the plot of the first movie was. But there was more to it than that. James Cameron remastered the movie with all the technologies that are available in 2022, including a 4K remaster and options to watch the movie in either a high refresh rate or 3D. There's also Dolby Cinema's HDR format and Atmos Audio. And finally, IMAX for all. These technologies certainly help. The movie was designed to be a visual showcase, and it's even more of a showcase than the last time around. It was almost worth watching for the same reason that the first one attracted such a large audience in the first place. It was an event. Would people turn up for this event? Yeah, nope. The people just didn't show up. Its two-week theatrical run grossed about $25 million domestically. That goes to show you just how excited people are to see this series return to theaters. Of course, it didn't help that there was minimal marketing for this re-release. But there's also been minimal marketing for The Way of Water. We hope it's becoming clearer now why the movie has just a negative prognosis. Looks like the Avatar sequel might become another example of a trend at Disney. After years of box office dominance, the mouse isn't doing as well at the theaters as it used to. Consider their biggest earner right now, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Looking at the Marvel movies of 2022, Thor Love and Thunder and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, both wound up underperforming at the box office. It's not that they flopped, but by Marvel standards, they were disappointing with their performance. Wakanda Forever seems to be faring well right now, but the fact that Marvel has had only one big success this entire year is unnerving. Their animated movies haven't been able to take the world by storm either this
this year. Lightyear and Turning Red both underperformed at theaters this year, though that might be partly because of the simultaneous releases on Disney+. Disney actually had another animated movie in the theaters at the time of making this video, but Strange World is also meeting pretty much the same fate. It's been a critical bomb and so no one's really surprised by the lack of marketing or commercial success there. Is Avatar 2 going to be the movie to buck the trend? Y'all know that it isn't. A sequel to a 13-year-old movie with very little marketing and a lot of production spending almost sounds like a recipe for disaster. We suppose miracles are possible, but it's looking pretty grim for James Cameron's latest passion project. Now, this isn't just alarming for Avatar 2. It could impact the future of the franchise. James Cameron isn't just making the second Avatar movie. Supposedly, the director shot parts 2 and 3 back to back, meaning that the production of the third installment of the franchise is well underway, even as the second movie hasn't come out. As for the fourth and fifth movies, a chunk of the fourth movie has been filmed, but no work has been done so far on the fifth. And depending on how The Way of Water ends up doing, Cameron may not have to bother with the fourth and fifth movies at all. The director has stated that so much money has gone into making these movies that, in order for them to even break even or make up their costs, the movie will have to outperform the Star Wars sequel trilogy. And it doesn't stop there either, because it might have to outdo Spider-Man No Way Home too, just to break even. And with these projections, the movie won't even get close to the mark. Let's move on to some positive news. The movie got finished at least. The last couple of months saw final touches being applied to the movie. And as of this week, the production has wrapped. Producer John Landau marked the occasion with a group shot of the cast and crew, announcing the end of final mixing and mastering and, with that, the wrap-up of production. Landau has been a frequent collaborator of James Cameron's, having worked on the first movie as well as Titanic. This is a long movie, exceeding three hours, and it took a long 13-year road to get here. When the first Avatar came out, Cameron jumped into the process of making the second, and found that the very technology he needed to make his underwater sequel didn't exist yet. Whether the movie succeeds or not, Hollywood overall is going to benefit from his work on underwater shooting and photography, as well as the animation techniques used to create CG water. We've already seen some of that in the recent Wakanda Forever. It might be nice, actually, for the movie to get the green light for the fourth and fifth installments. James Cameron's movies do often push the boundaries of the industry, even if the 3D stuff never caught on with the first Avatar. This is a director who loves to show us what's possible in movies, when we can't see it for ourselves. We hope he gets even more opportunities to keep working his magic. Finally, it might be worth going to the way of the water. The biggest knock on the first Avatar movie was that it was too showy and obsessed with visuals and world building. Audiences found the characters and story to be cheesy and not compelling in hindsight. Well, it looks like Avatar 2 is addressing precisely those concerns. Defending the movie's lengthy runtime, Cameron promised a story that would be emotionally compelling. He emphasized character, story, and relationships in the new film, and acknowledged that those aspects were not the priority last time around. We'll totally be checking out the movie to see how Cameron's new focus pans out. But will enough other people do the same? That's it for today's video. Do you think that we're being too pessimistic about the movie? We know it has its defenders, so we'd love to hear from them. Drop your opinions in the comments section below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.